Hello everyone and welcome to Saturday Night Crafting, a day late again. I got so carried away with this one and had way too much fun that I ended up working on samples and I couldn't stop and it ended up being a whole entire day late. So I hope you enjoy this one. This is playing with shaving foam. So I know a lot of people have done this technique, a lot of people have a lot of videos out there, but I thought I would go through this technique with you use everything in my stash that I could use as a coloring medium, share with you how it went and what it looked like, what I liked the most, and kind of give you an idea of what you could do in your own craft room and what you could create. So on the screen is a bunch of the stuff I'm going to use today. You could use a ruler. I'm going to use this cake thingy. Um, I don't know what it is, like a cake spatula thing, really cheap off Amazon. I've got a tray so I don't make a big mess on my desk. I've got a whole bunch of stencils. Now I will do my best to link everything I've got that I'm sharing with you uh, in the description box, but there is a lot of stuff that is either expired, retired, or I bought in a different country and I can't really link. So some of these like paints are just from the dollar store in Canada. Um, but I will do my best. Everything that's current, I'll pop in the description box. If I forget anything, then just ping me a message. But we are going to play. Now the primary thing we're gonna play with is food coloring. So you can use reinkers, and that's one thing I didn't share with you on the screen is you can use reinkers, but I'm not keen on that. They cost a lot of money and I wanna use them for my ink pads. So food coloring, you can get so cheap. A lot of people, when I last used food coloring in my video said, actually, I've got a whole bunch of food coloring in my cupboard that's expired. And that's a great way to use it up is to do a technique like this. Obviously the star of the show is shaving foam. Get whatever the cheapest shaving foam is, there is out there. You don't need the Gillette stuff. That's just what I ordered from Asda because I was doing an order. And you don't need much. We just need a nice thin layer on your sort of work surface. So I put some down and then went, wow, <laughs> that expanded a lot. So just scrape some of it off, save it for later. Honestly, this stuff stayed foamy for hours. So I played for a whole entire day in and around picking up and dropping off the kids. So just make yourself a nice thin layer on your work surface. And then I'm just going to go and take some food coloring and plop some colors down. Now for my techniques, I'm trying to use the same sort of colors between all the different mediums just to share with you what they kind of look like. Um, but use whatever you've got in your stash. And if you haven't really got much, just raid your food cupboard and see if you've got any food coloring in there and you can make this work. So all I've done is drop down some food coloring and then I have taken my stylus and I've gone and kind of swirled it around, twirled it around. And that's what kind of gives you that sort of marble effect that you get with this technique. We're going for that really fun, unique marble effect. Now when you pull it up, it's a hot mess and you're like, whoa, what do I do with this? This is where that little plastic tool comes in handy or your ruler. You're just going to scrape it off and you're left with this gorgeous pattern. Now it looks a bit blurry and it does get a bit clearer because it will dry. And so that's part of the fun effect is you can just scrape it off and then let it dry for a minute and you'll get this beautiful pattern on your background. Now I'm playing with two different types of cardstock. I'm going to use photo paper and I'm going to use regular cardstock. So this is the photo paper now that I'm coming in with. The thing I like about photo paper is that it really pulls that color out and makes it really, really, really vibrant. So I love working with photo paper. However, with some of these mediums, I found that cardstock was actually better and you it like really sucked in that color a lot more. Now this isn't as beautiful as that first one because I went for a second print on that shave foam. And this again is why I like using food coloring and not reinkers or something that's really expensive because really only get one good print out of that first uh, piece of paper that you stick down. Now another way that you can use up your leftover bits so that you're not completely wasting that paper is to then take that leftover bit that you pulled off the top and kind of just re-slide it back on. And you can get some fun colors with that kind of technique as well. You won't get quite the same kind of marbling effect, but you will still get the separation of colors and you'll be able to see that you've used more than one color on your piece of cardstock. So you can see here that I'm smearing it down and then I can pull it away and I can get some of that color. Now I didn't quite push it down far enough so I didn't get that middle bit there, but it's still usable. We could still die cut out of this and make use of it. Now I find you get the best look on your photo paper if you kind of buff it afterwards. So you can do this while it's still a bit damp, you can do this when it's fully dry, but you wanna come in with a microfiber cloth or a paper towel or something and just kind of buffer off that shaving foam and then you get that shine back in your photo paper. Now I'm going in for another look and so I'm gonna use a chopstick instead. I like the kind of thicker version. And this time I'm gonna use this first print with my photo paper just so I can show you how much that color kind of absorbs. 
And then the different kind of look you get between regular cardstock and using photo paper. Now at this point I was getting a little bit like, oh, I'm using all that color and I'm kind of wasting it by pulling it off if I don't get another good print. So I decided to take a second piece of photo paper and just kind of squish it onto the first one. And woohoo, I got two prints out of one. So that's a great way to stretch it as well. Now I switched to using a ruler here because I found that my little white um, tool was actually scratching my photo paper and leaving marks across the top of it. And, um, but then I found that actually it was just such a big faff using this huge ruler on this little piece of cardstock. So then I remembered I actually have a sandpaper block that I keep in my top drawer for doing some distressing. So I decided to just sand down that edge and it worked a dream. So now I have a nice smooth edge on this cheap cake thingy. I think it's to like smooth the sides of your cake. <laughs> I don't know but it was about a pound and so it wasn't expensive at all. And then I found that it made a really nice difference and I got a really nice smooth look on the top of my card. So here's the um, comparison between cardstock, regular cardstock and photo paper. And you can see you still get gorgeous vibrant colors between them. You get the depth of color and kind of separation of color but the photo paper is a lot more vibrant and a lot more sort of um, bold and bright, but I do like the cardstock version as well. So it's whatever you kind of feel like. However, just pay attention to some of your mediums might not absorb so well. So we're going to use some metallics and some micas in a minute and you'll see that it absorbs nicer into the cardstock rather than the photo paper. So we're going to use some powders as our next sort of medium. These are the Pretty Gets Gritty Explosion Powders. So they have some mica in them and they have a lot of color and the color kind of explodes all over the place. And there's a few different ways you can kind of play with these um, in your creating. So I'm going to put down the color. I forgot to swirl it. Still looks really cool, but we're not getting exactly what we were going for with the marble look. But this is how the powder looks if you use it and don't actually swirl it around. So you get this kind of cool speckled, kind of frozen in time look going on. And this is gorgeous. So this is the regular cardstock. It absorbs really nicely in there. Now I just kind of mixed up the top and then added a bit more color on. I'm using hardly any of this powder. So a little goes a long way with these kind of colored powders. And lots of companies do them. Have a look in your stash. You might already have some that are um, going to be quite useful. Now this, you can see here, it's not as metallic. It's kind of absorbed the color, but a lot of that mica is kind of wiped off with the cloth. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the swirly bits because that's what I forgot to do originally. So I'm going to take my chopstick and kind of swirl it around and then you get the sort of speckled and swirled marbled look. So it's quite a different look going on. However, if you want to make this a bit more color flowing, the whole idea behind these kind of powders is you add water to them and then they kind of flow a bit more. So here I'm coming in with two other colors. I've got Cupid and Mermaid. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I get all my foam down on my tray, spread it out a little bit, sprinkle on the powders, and then I come in with some water and I spray all that. And now the shaving foam doesn't really absorb the water. It's quite nice. So it just allows that color to kind of blend a bit. And then you can do your normal swirly. And it's just a slightly different look where you get a bit more spreading of that color. And you can do whatever patterns and designs you like, but it just kind of makes that color move a bit more. We're going to move on to using stencils. Now I'm going to share with you a few different ways you can do the stenciling kind of technique to add a bit more oomph to those cards and do a bit more creativity. So this is where we can use up some of that leftover bit as well. So all you have to do is take your stencil, stick it on top of your cardstock, whichever one you choose to use, scoop up some of that leftover and just drag it over the top. I found it didn't actually go under the stencil at all. It was beautiful. It stayed on top. That foam is nice and thick so it works really well. Now don't rub this off and don't scrape it off. You want to set this aside to dry fully. Otherwise in that white space you're going to get color. So leave it to dry completely fully and then we can go in and rub off the excess. Next I'm going to share with you using paint. So I'm using an acrylic paint. This was my least favorite of all of them. I did not like the paint. It didn't work very well. It didn't kind of flow very nicely. Um, it was a lot thicker and kind of harder to work with. So this is my least favorite medium to use, but again, if this is all you got, it will work. So this is on regular cardstock. I'm just gonna go ahead and scrape that off and you get that gorgeous pattern kind of setting on there. The thing I didn't like about the paint is it kind of stuck to everything a bit more. I had to be quite quick in washing my stencil. I had to be quite quick in washing my tray. And I think the main reason I didn't like it is it just didn't work on photo paper. So this is the photo paper here on the right. You can't, it doesn't shine, it doesn't pop, it's no different than regular cardstock. So it looks quite nice on the cardstock, but you can't really use photo paper with it. It didn't really work. The only plus side to using 
paint I found that I liked more than any other medium was it was the only medium I used that worked with black cardstock. So if you want to get that kind of marble effect on a black or a dark background, paint is the way forward. Paint works really, really well. It really pops off that black background. Next, we're gonna move on to sprays. So if you've got any kind of colored sprays, you could do DIY sprays, chuck it in a bottle, add in some food coloring, you could shake it up and do sprays as well. And it's just kind of a more softer tone if you want um, in your background. So I've got these two from Pretty Gets Gritty. Again, I'll link them down below and I'm just gonna spritz them on to my background and do my little patterns, do some swirlies, whatever you feel like doing. And you get this same kind of marble effect, but it's a bit more soft and a bit more muted it's not as liney if that makes sense it's more powdery um so it's a different look to it so if you want to use sprays you can and you can get like a slightly different background to what you would get with using um drops of a color instead so here you can see you can still see those swirls but it kind of covers that whole background nice and evenly it's just a different look. Now these sprays have mica powder in them so again on the photo paper it didn't really stick but on the cardstock it did really well now I'm going to move in and use some mixatives and some alloys. Um, these are from Tim Holtz. They are alcohol inks and I'm going to mix them with my food coloring just to try and create a marble effect. I really wanted to have a nice swirly background but have it kind of look like that marble countertop. So I'm just kind of shaking a bit of that metallic on the top, swirling it up, do the same thing, stick my cardstock in and scrape off the top. Now with this, again, on the regular cardstock, that metallic absorbed straight into that cardstock and looked gorgeous. However, on my photo paper, it kind of came off a bit. So you can, it, it will stay in the photo paper a little bit, but I did have to set it with hairspray because it started to rub off when it was all dry. So you get some gorgeous looks and you can get that kind of metallic bling in there as well. So if you've got any of those metallic colors to play with, you can have a really good time. Now again, I was using up some of my leftovers because I had all that gold in there. I didn't want it to go to waste. So I grabbed some stencils and stuck them down onto some cardstock and onto some photo paper. And again, once they're all fully dry, I'll come in and kind of buffer them out and get rid of that excess shaving foam off the top. Now here's the silver, I thought silver and purple would go really well together, and I used this in one of my samples at the end of the video. I do have a whole bunch of cards to share with you at the end of the video, which I hope you'll enjoy and kind of get some inspiration from as to what you can do with these backgrounds. But this one's gorgeous, I absolutely love that shine of that silver in with that purple and the kind of marble effect going on. And if you stuck with me this long so far, I am so grateful because this video is a longer video, but I had so much I wanted to share with you, and you can always press the little button at the bottom right and speed up the playback sp um, speed so you can put me on to like double time and then I go a bit quicker. <laughs> now this one I wanted to keep in it's just the exact same as what we've been doing but I decided to go with rainbow colors and these were my favorite of all of the backgrounds I did. I absolutely love these rainbows. Now look at that amazing. Now if you choose to do this and you're going to do multiple colors all kind of in a row make sure you're taking your tool and dragging down. Now I am not chucking any of this foam that I'm pulling off, I'm putting it onto another tray. So I was working with two to three trays at one time and I was pulling that off and then putting it onto another tray so I could use it again. So how gorgeous is this rainbow effect? And it looks stunning on the regular cardstock. It looks stunning on the photo paper as well. And I did a few different ones. I did ones where I added in some gold as well. So I got some rainbow and gold going on and I did some card samples with those at the end. So on the left is the photo paper, on the right is the regular card stock, and the photo paper was a second print. This is a first print on photo paper. So you can see the vibrancy of the colors, so much fun. So if you wanna use more than one color, have at her, it looks great. So again, you can see they're both amazing and both beautiful, but you get kind of that more pop with the photo paper than you do with regular card stock. This is the stunning background where I added in that gold mixative. And how gorgeous is that? You can see those hints of the gold in with those bright, vibrant colors and they kind of all mix together a bit as they should in the natural arrangement of colors. I love it. I love that rainbow order and color. Now another way to add some color if you don't want to kind of use up that scrap left over is just to put a small line of your shaving foam along the top of your kind of area, your work surface, add on your color, whatever you want, swirl it all up, then pop your cardstock down, your stencil down and just drag it over the top. This way you're getting that same kind of color flow, getting lots of vibrant color, but you're using a lot less product and a lot less 
uh, shaving foam as well. Now this one was a very fine detailed stencil so I did get some bleeding through it. It didn't quite work as well but then you can see here on this one that's got a bit of a thicker stencil outline. It came off really really well with no bleeding underneath the stencil. Now if you're really careful you can actually drag your original sort of marble pattern over that stencil really nicely. If you kind of scoop it just right, you can place that marble effect right over top of that stencil and then you get the marbled look through the stencil, which is quite cool. I kind of struggled with that a little bit. Now here's one of my uh, photo paper ones that it's all dry. You can see it's kind of matte looking. As soon as we start to buffer out that shaving powder residue that's on the top, you get this gorgeous pop of color underneath and it's absolutely stunning. So here's another one that I did with the stencils and the rainbow colors. I really went to town with the rainbow color. I had a lot of fun with it. But how gorgeous is that? Now you can see the comparison on the left is buffed, on the right is not buffed. And then once you've buffed them, here are the striking colors. So you get this gorgeous look. So do make sure you take that time at the end when it's all dry to come in with a nice dried cloth or towel and just kind of rub it out. Now again, on the left is paper, on the right is the photo paper. And then here are some of the samples that I did and then the ones that I played with off screen. Had a lot of fun, played with a lot of them. These are all of them dried and buffed. So as you can see, I did an absolute ton of backgrounds. I had a lot of fun with them. And I did turn quite a few of them into cards. I have tons left over and I will do another video again at some point soon, sharing all the ways you can use up your backgrounds and different patterns and different ways to use them up. Now the last few minutes of the video is sharing with you all the cards that I made out of these backgrounds. Again, as I said, I've got loads left over to do. Now in my photos that I've got here playing for you, I will have sort of a photo of all the things that I used that are still available, and then the projects I made with them kind of following on. So you can speed through this if you want. Um, I will do my best to link all those products down below for you. Anything that's kind of not in the pictures, is stuff that I use that's retired or expired that you can no longer get and some of them I don't even know what they're from because I just made a whole bunch of sentiment strips and I've just got a box of sentiment strips on my desk and I kind of reach for that and use them. So as you can see on the screen, I went and had some fun making some shaker cards, did some butterfly shaker cards, um, used some gorgeous stamps in my collection um, or in my office and made some beautiful backgrounds just using black ink right on top of these backgrounds. Finished off some of them with the various colors of Nuvo drops, but I had a lot of fun just creating different cards and using up these backgrounds in different ways. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you give me a like and a share and a um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I do have all the links for my social medias down below, my Instagram, my Facebook group where you can come and join um, me and a whole bunch of other awesome crafters. And I also have Buy Me A Coffee if you'd like to support my channel in a different way. So thank you very much for hanging out with me and I actually am going to be probably taking off the rest of February so don't be surprised if you don't see a video from me for a couple weeks. Um, my kids are off of school on half term and um, I am planning to try and do some DIY around the house so if I can get around to it I will try and post some photos on Instagram on anything that I work on. I really want to try learning to use power tools and kind of have a go at doing my own DIY so stay tuned for that if that interests you or if you want to have a laugh <laughs> then make sure you follow along on my Instagram for that. Um, but yeah, have a fantastic rest of your month if I don't see you before then. Bye!